and in five, four, three, two, one. And action. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome, welcome to the trials, welcome to the tribulations and welcome to my hair journey. My name is Avery Grace and if we are seeing each other for the first time, welcome. I hope that you stay, you know, click that subscribe button. Let's not be ghost watchers in 2021. We've survived so much. Um, we're still thriving, you know, uh, despite the circumstances. But yeah, welcome to my channel. <laughs> welcome to my journey. So today's video is a sit-down video. Um, something that I've been thinking of doing for quite a while, but I just haven't found the words to say this. I don't even think I've found the words even now but I'm going to try and explain as much as possible so today's video is about why I stopped the lock method <laughs> uh, <laughs> so not entirely stopped but uh, I no longer practice the lock method for my hair and I'm going to tell you why okay so why I stopped um, doing the lock method so for those of you who are new to your hair journey or new to what is a lock method let's start there um, so basically a lock method is a term that was coined by Rochelle Graham or Graham um, Campbell I think that's her name um, she's an African-American I think she's Jamaican born um, I think she also has a hair brand called Ellie Hair Care or something like that. But yeah, that term was coined by her um, based off of how to care for your hair and what steps it is that you would need to follow to help maximize the moisture um, retained by your hair based on how you layer your products. So a lock method is basically um, liquid oil and cream um liquid being a leave-in conditioner or a liquid literally just water oil being any oil that is easily absorbed into your hair and cream being any cream that will help seal all that moisture now when i first returned to being natural i didn't know what a lock method was and kind of was confused when i heard about this lock method now some people do it the other way around which is an lco so that is leave in liquid cream and oil um so just to give you context i have low porosity hair which means for my hair it takes a while to absorb moisture and when moisture is actually absorbed or products are retained it build up is very like i my hair gets dirty pretty quickly because of that um so with the lock method it's basically to help assist you in your stage of your porosity whichever porosity that you are so you modify that based on your porosity so because i have low porosity i use i followed the lock method i saw that it worked for a while um i think i started doing the lock method when i had a, a moisture no when I had a protein overload, when I tried the rice water method, I'll leave the video up here if you want to check that. But yeah, after that, that's when I went into the whole lock method um, situation. Now, like I mentioned, it is a leave-in conditioner, so it has... It could be a water-based. I preferred using a water-based leave-in conditioner and then you use an oil. The oils that I used to use, there's an oil from um, on Jackie's. It's um, avocado oil, um, argan, no, not argan oil. Is it that one? But the one in the green, with the green label. I'll try to find a picture and I'll put it up here. So I used that oil absolutely loved it um i also used this oil over here from vatica because this one i do have it so i'm like oh i'm gonna show you um i use this oil from vatica and then um now i've started using well haven't really started using it 
but um, a hair and scalp oil from naturally Africa so this is the oil this is just a scalp oil though so it does say that um, with the oil part of your leave-in um, lock method you need to make sure that you use a leave-in conditioner that is I mean an oil that is easily absorbable or easily absorbed by your hair so for example oils that can not be absorbed by your hair are castor oil you ca um, castor oil is pretty thick so it um, also holds on um, onto your hair and scalp so using castor oil for example as part of your leave-in conditioner is really not conducive to the process um, it basically just prevents everything and everybody from coming in because it's so heavy um, usually oils that are perfect for that are like avocado oil um, that are perfect for leave-in I mean for the lock method avocado oil the soybean oil um which other oil argan oil as well i think i could be wrong correct me if i'm wrong down in the comments if you know but going off of the vatican natural oil um shea butter oil so they have shea butter oil they've got soybean oil um and what else yeah i think that's about the basic oils that they have and coconut oil as well um, I never use coconut oil as part of my lock method only because I just believe coconut oil should be a hot oil treatment type of oil because it, it, it it's easily absorbed into your hair if it is warm. Let me just put it that way. So that's the oil. Now the cream part of the whole lock method is what I struggled with for the longest time. Because I couldn't find a cream. Um, there were butters that I used. I recently tried the um, Nilotica um, hair butter. I loved it but I haven't used it since I think I've used it only twice only because it's a, it feels a bit heavy for me so I would probably use it in winter which I highly doubt <laughs> but the cream that I actually fell in love with that I felt worked perfectly for my hair was the cream um, curling cream from African Pride from their Moisture Miracle range I'll find a picture and I'll put it up here so that's the uh, cream that I used um, as part of in fact when I first started I started with the who's this company i started with my natural i bought um there was a three for two special at click so that's what i bought um they leave in conditioner their strengthening oil as well as their cream i think did i use their cream i don't know i'll find i have a video of me trying out the lock method so now that's those are the products that i use uh for a leave-in i used a leave-in conditioner from a Saudi organics absolutely love that leave-in conditioner um but I, I haven't really used it again only because i'm into the whole trialing product situation but leave-in conditioners that are water-based are your best friend for the lock method um so when it comes to and comes to that it's basically you layering on the product so that your hair can actually absorb the moisture now let's get to the part where why did i stop okay so when i initially started with my journey like i said i was introduced into the lock method because i went through a phase of a protein overload so what happens with the protein overload your hair becomes dry your hair breaks off easily like my hair was short like it was starting to break off to a point where it was just short um so i decided to go into the lock method the lock method helped um for a very long time i don't want to lie because i've stuck to it since then until recently when lockdown started and it was hard to buy products <laughs> we couldn't buy certain things i mean um was it what level five Louis? we couldn't buy cosmetics we we could buy cosmetics but there were certain hair products that we couldn't buy so it started then um i started just you know using my products sparingly doing my hair less and less because i'm trying to you know hold on to the products because i mean at the time we didn't know how long this thing was going to last for so i went in and i started cutting down certain things or just skipping certain steps and i realized that with the lock method my hair never really 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 retained its moisture it was dry it was 
moisturize for the first two three days and then day no day two days actually max and then day three we were already dry my ends were brittle things were breaking off it was just a mess honey so i was like no we need to find a way to retain the moisture how can we retain the moisture so i started experimenting leaving products out putting products in and all of that and so forth <laughs> I started leaving products out and adding products in as well just to see what works for me right so this is me I'm talking about me I'm not saying do it but if you get an idea of what it is that I'm trying to say then I hope that it helps you so um, okay so I do okay so what I've realized is what I realized is that um, oil actually dried out my hair um you might say oh but you're using oils that are easily absorbable into your hair yes 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 but uh oil is a sealant it's not a moisturizer oil doesn't moisturize your hair it seals in the moisture now imagine you are putting a leave-in conditioner that's water-based and you're using an oil water and oil like science those two don't mix number one number two let's say part of the leave-in conditioner has been absorbed into your hair then you go in and you put in your oil your oil is going to seal that cuticle seal in that moisture whatever moisture that you absorbed into your hair like i said i have low porosity hair which means it is hard for my hair to take in moisture and then i go in with a cream for me on a science but also on a logical sense it didn't make sense number one number two my hair was telling me that um i would do my hair i would wash my hair do my lock method put it into um to amagotai too and then carry on with life but then by day three it's already dry which means i need to do moisturize it again even though i had it protected or i had it plaited up but it would still dry up quite quickly so i was like you know what it doesn't like for me the oil really dried out my hair and it took me a while to accept that uh, but i was in denial for a very long time <laughs> um but i just realized that me and the oil we just we're not vibing at this point in time um of my journey it only made sense to use oil in a hot oil treatment where my hair either was under the shower and my cuticles were open and then it could go in and seal in whatever moisture was in there but now i'm doing the lock method out of the shower so which means hair water evaporates leave-in conditioner whatever goes in goes in but i never gave the moisture of the leave-in conditioner time to actually absorb into the strands of my hair i just went in and slapped some oil in there like you could see even in the process of doing the lock method you could see that mm, what are we doing oil and water like i said they don't mix so I, I I tried I really did but my hair was like narcissus we need to find a different option so um, oil is is good for your scalp by the way um, I remember I followed a particular youtuber and Instagrammer um, who was like I don't base my scalp anymore I don't use oils on my scalp because my scalp produces its own oils blah 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 and then uh, for someone who's got who's prone to dandruff i was like yes if it works for you surely it's gonna work for me and i stopped using oil on my hair and uh boy i paid for that because my hair started to itch uh my scalp started being dry faster um it really facilitated a lot of growth not a lot of growth some growth because oil does act like a barrier onto your scalp right but now you must remember that the pores on your scalp are much bigger than the pores in your um hair um as well as um your scalp also produces its own oils so it doesn't really need oil but because we have natural hair our i mean 
coily hair our hair coils so when your hair is a coil it takes a while for moisture to go all the way to the tip right so imagine if you had straight hair and the oil from your scalp went all the way into your hair it would go right through right but now because we've got all these coils it can only go a certain point which is why when you moisturize your hair you're told focus on the tips you know because that's the oldest part of your hair that's the part that no longer gets the oil from your scalp so i switched it around and then i use this oil now for my scalp like i would just put oil just massage it in you know get it in there get it in there it, you are going to be prone to build up um there's no way around build up i wish there was um you know how how can we combat build up you know, everybody that has a natural hair company that's making products, please help us out. <laughs> so, yeah, oil is good for your scalp. So, but not heavy oils. So, like I said, I use this oil, but I only use this twice a week. I don't use it every day. Um, and I also now have included this hair and scalp oil. It is infused with vitamin E tea tree, castor, grapeseed, coconut, and sweet almond oil. So I just include that into my routine. So that is the part of the oil. So I, like I said, I, I realize oil dries out your hair. So let's swap it out and see what we can, you know, do with it. Um, since changing that part of my routine, my hair is much fuller at the bottom. Um, it dries, it doesn't dry out as quickly. And my hair actually maintains it's moisture just a leave-in conditioner and a cream leave-in conditioner cream leave-in conditioner cream sometimes just cream no oils in my hair so i've completely taken out oils on my hair um in terms of like styling and my hair has maintained its moisture beautifully my hair is fuller my hair dries out it doesn't dry out as quick as it used to during the lock method and I've seen growth because of, not because of me massaging, but then I've seen a lot of growth based of my hair now taking in moisture. When you use oils that are humectants, for example, or products that have humectants like aloe vera, glycerin as well. Most of the products I use have glycerin in them. So which means when I'm outside, humidity, my hair attracts all the moisture. And you know, we're good and moisturized and nourished and all of that. So yeah, that is my lock method story. That's why I stopped doing the lock method because I felt like using the oil just prevented my hair from taking in all the goodness from the cream, the goodness from the leave-in conditioner. So now I just use a cream and a leave-in conditioner or a styler and a cream or just that. Either a leave-in conditioner that's liquid-based or a leave-in conditioner that is um, kind of like a cream I'll show you one that I use now from African Pride I will leave it up here that's a leave-in conditioner that I know. so that is the leave-in conditioner that I use either be it in liquid form or it in a cream kind of form um, I absolutely love the leave-in conditioner from Fabulous. I have been using the leave-in conditioner for quite a while um, that's one that I recently reviewed um, another leave-in conditioner that I am a fan of, yes, I've mentioned African Pride. Who else have I been using? I'm trying to think through my stash. Yeah, I think those are the two that I've been using for now, like consistently. Um, when it comes to creams, the only cream that I believe in, I'm afraid, is the one from African Pride, which is the curling cream. That's the only cream that I believe in at the moment. So I'm not until i find another one i'm sticking to that one <laughs> i'm sticking to my story okay um so yeah those are the creams that i now that's the cream that i use and that's those are the products that i now use in my hair journey um what i also wanted to talk about was co-washing um this is basically something that i've kind of opted not to do anymore i don't believe in co-washing i don't believe co-washing is good for your long term um for long term like in terms of a co-wash now um and then you wait a week i think the reason i stopped co-washing is because now i only either wash my hair every two weeks because i don't have anywhere to go I'm currently working from home so there's literally no need for me to be putting tons of products on my hair unless I'm shooting content so co-washing my hair would be for example in prep 
preparing for a style or if i want to do a sleep down then i will co-wash my hair to get my hair wet and loosened up and the curls nice and you know soft so that it's easy for me to sleek it down and then after that i go in and clean my hair you need to shampoo your hair i know i'm going back to my usual routine which was shampoo twice a month and then co-wash twice a month um when i come to think of it i hardly ever followed that because i skipped weeks when it comes to wash day i don't wash my hair every week okay and i will not be shamed i don't feel ashamed for not doing that because washing your hair every week is tedious and I get tired I am a hard working independent black woman I need to rest because <laughs> we don't know what rest is because we always on the go 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 so that's mainly the reason why I have opted not to co-wash my hair anymore because of the amount of time in between me washing my hair uh, but co-washing is something that you can do. There are amazing products out there. Aunt Jackie's has a nice co-wash. Um, Nilotica has a nice co-wash. Um, even... Um, trans, trans, even... <laughs> I can't even say their name, but I love them. Even them. I'll put the picture up there. They have a nice co-wash. So you can still co-wash your hair. But let's say, for example, if you are on vacation and you just need to put moisture back into your hair. Because I feel like a co-wash is literally a moisturizing shampoo. And not a stripping shampoo. But, you know, that's just how I see it. That's just how my hair feels after using it. So that is a co-wash and why I don't co-wash anymore. I really don't believe in co-washing anymore. Um, I, I think I have not believed in co-washing for a while. Um, it just doesn't make sense for my hair. Um, my hair gets dirty very quickly after a co-wash. And yeah, that's just, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so, um... I've, you know, like, that is my story, man. Like, I feel like that's just me re telling you how I have changed my whole hair routine. And I hope you learn something. I hope you take away something um, from this. And I hope that, you know, you experiment with your hair journey. Don't be so constricted to what Mang Mang is doing because they have 50,000 followers. What Mang Mang is saying is the Bible, is the truth. Um you need to live and go through your journey for yourself you know it's your hair it's your journey and please please <laughs> i'm dragging y'all because the questions that i get are a bit wild and i'm like i want something that will grow my hair how when you don't have a routine so Step one, find a routine. Step two, find products that will work for you. Step three, experiment with your journey. Step four, experiment with your journey. <laughs> but step five, love your hair. Your journey is yours. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. We've got different genes. We've got different um, backgrounds. We've got different diets as well. Yes, food plays an important part into how your hair grows. But yeah, man, that's your journey. Experiment with it. And it's hey, it always grows back. If you mess it up, we start again tomorrow. We, you know, we. it's not like, oh, if you mess up now, you ain't never going to have hair ever again. No, you will always have hair. I guess until, no, not even until you grow old. Because I've seen grannies with long hair, nice, beautiful, gray, white hair. So there's really no excuse so yeah man i'm just blabbing at this point but thank you so much for watching thank you for clicking on that button thank you for subscribing <laughs> thank you for joining my hair journey i will see you guys in my next video bye